Let's take your stream audio from sounding like this to this. Much better. This really terrible sounding audio is being recorded on one of my favorite USB mics to have ever released. It's bad, but it's not far off from how most Twitch streams sound. But this is how it should sound. How did we get here? It's simpler and yet also more involved than you might think. I'm Eples Vox, the stream professor, and we spend a lot of time talking about improving your stream or video's image quality. Encoding settings, capture cards, camera choices, perhaps too much time, as it's actually way more important to have good audio quality. Audio is number one after all. We're going to dive in on how to keep your stream audio from sucking, on how to sound better than the vast majority of streams on Twitch, YouTube, or heaven forbid Facebook, with some easy steps and compromise in today's episode of Stream Guides, sponsored by Elgato and their Wave 1 and Wave 3 microphones. We'll also be using these for our demos. The Wave microphones are easy to set up, just needing a simple USB cable, have high quality capsules designed with the mines at Lewitt, and have some killer features like clip guard that help keep your audio perfect. The principles that we will be discussing here will apply to just about any microphone, however, and I will note when that differs. We'll be discussing three areas of focus in this video. Physics and your setup, technique and mic usage, and adding a little polish with post-processing. Chapter markers will be on screen and in the description in case you need to reference back at any point in time or want to link it to your friends struggling with audio. Wink. There's a lot you can do with post-processing or clever tricks to add a little bit of polish to your microphone sound, but none of that matters if you're not setting it up right and you're ignoring the laws of physics. Physics dictate how everything in our dimension of the universe operates, and there are just things that you can't get around. First, let's talk about your mic placement. There's a direct relationship between the closer a microphone is to your subject and the quality of sound you get from it within reason, and the ease of reducing background sounds. If you have a dynamic microphone, these are designed specifically to be used as close to the speaker's mouth as possible. Condenser microphones, on the other hand, such as the Elgato Wave, provide much more flexibility to use at a distance. In a fully sound-treated and sound-isolated recording booth and music studios, condenser microphones are often kept at a couple feet distance from the singer or speaker. If you're in such a scenario, like a vocal booth, go for it. But the way sound works in a desk streaming setup are very different. If you're streaming at a desk, you still want your mic up close to your mouth, probably with a pop filter. You also want to make sure that your keyboard and mouse are positioned on the other side of the mic. You want the mic between you and your keyboard and mouse or other noise generating objects rather than the opposite. Basic directions will tell you that anything making sound in the pickup area of a mic will be picked up and it's a lot harder to filter that out. If you absolutely have to have your microphone less visible, be it for teaching or business scenarios, a big streamer microphone is honestly not the right call. A lavalier clipped to your shirt or a shotgun mic mounted just out of frame is usually the way to go there. I have videos testing these on my channel. But for standard streaming and broadcast scenarios, this is the accepted norm and the trade-off for cleaner, better audio is definitely worth it. Specific keyboard choice can matter here as well. Gamers often chase the clickiest sounding keyboard possible, but that's a terrible idea for streaming. O-rings can stop your keys from bottoming out while you're typing, but that doesn't stop the switch click. I have come to love Romer G switches and then Box Royale switches for more custom keyboards, as both of those are much more quieter for streaming purposes while still being very comfy on my sensitive hands. Linear switches aren't great, as you're going to be bottoming out the key, smashing it into your desk, and creating more sound, even if they lack the tactile click. You probably don't want your microphone blocking your face, though. A good recommendation is to keep your mic at a 45-ish degree angle from your mouth. This allows the mic to still be pointed directly at where your voice is coming from, but it doesn't block your face to the camera as much, and comes with the added benefit of not picking up as many mouth sounds, breaths, or plosives. Speaking of plosives, a pop filter is often a must to protect your viewer's ears. Plosives are the harsh P, B, and T sounds that occur, which effectively hit the mic capsule with a strong burst of air, which can really hurt listeners' ears, as if you were blowing right into them. A pop filter is a basic mesh that helps diffuse those air bursts. A pop filter should be at least one inch away from the mic capsule. It should not sit up against the mic's face. The Ogata Wave pop filter clips to the shock mount and provides a great air gap. This one to three inch gap helps give room for the air to disperse, otherwise you're still pushing it into the mic if it's too close. Also, if you're using one of those cheaper fly swatter style pop filters that are made of fabric, you want them to be dual layer or more, or they're not really doing much of anything either. Some mics come with a windscreen instead of a pop filter. While this technically can reduce plosives, it doesn't do so fully and more so acts as, 
Well, a windscreen, a filter to keep wind from distorting the mic. It's okay to use one in place of a pop filter with some distance between your mouth and the mic, but using both a pop filter and a windscreen is kind of silly. The pop filter, when used right, should be doing the job itself and the windscreen cuts down on those higher frequencies of your voice, so both is just hurting your sound. Many microphones come with a neat stand to give you a basic option for sitting your mic somewhere. But putting that on a desk where you're typing or banging your arms a lot, a normal occurrence for game streams, that sound will translate up to your microphone. A shock mount can help reduce these noises significantly, as can getting your mic up on a microphone arm. Conveniently, Elgato also sells Wave mic arms now too. They have the normal mic arm that can go up over your computer monitors or the mic arm LP that reaches under your monitors for a more slim profile. I reviewed these quite favorably in my microphone arms buyer's guide linked below. The second way physics affects your streaming setup is, well, the rest of your setup, other than your microphone. Two big things are involved here, noise from other sources and reflections. Added noise is mostly obvious. If you keep your PC on your desk right next to your microphone, avoiding fan noise can be impossible, especially when your PC is working super hard to game and stream. Keeping your PCs on the floor, using something to keep it off the carpet and able to breathe, or you know, using cases with dust filters, etc., makes a world of difference for your ambient sound. And then there's the obvious, shutting your door, telling family when you need quiet time, shutting windows when you can, etc. Reflections are the tricky one. Reflections apply to sound as much as they do light. When you project sound out of your mouth, it shoots out and bounces off all of the surface in, surfaces in your space, just slower than light would. Your desk, your computer monitors, your walls, your floor, your ceiling, all of it. Your walls and indirectly your desk and PC monitors and your ceiling are considered first reflection points. They are the big ones that are most likely to produce reverb or room sound when you talk or shout. Covering your desk with a nice soft desk mat, such as eposfox.gg slash merch, wink wink, helps a lot with your desk reflections. And then pointing your camera at an angle so you're not talking directly at your PC monitors can help with some of the, those initial reflections back into your microphone. But then comes sound treatment. Elgato makes their wave panels, which may look like cheap Amazon foam, but actually provide a three-step professional solution. A little bit on your most empty wall portions can help reduce the wetness of your room sound a lot. Alternatively, there is cheap Amazon sound foam, which won't perform quite as well, or there's moving blankets, which do a great job at deadening your room, but sound a little less natural because you sound like you're recording in a closet. If you have non-carpeted floors, getting a rug below you or around you can help as well. This should all be a motivator to design your backdrop set and stream space a little bit more, because ultimately an empty room with empty walls will always sound worse than a room that just has a bunch of stuff in it. The more things around to break up and absorb sound, the better. You can watch my video breaking down my acoustic treatment journey in my big garage studio linked below. Your mic is positioned properly and your environment is tamed, but how do you use it? That may sound like a silly question, but the most common issues that people actually run into with microphones is just using them wrong. I mentioned before that dynamic mics pretty much require being up close to the speaker's mouth, and condenser mics will work best that way in desktop streaming setups. Choosing the right mic and positioning it correctly are big steps. Beyond that, you have to actually train your voice. New creators often start out shy and quiet, and that doesn't really work for entertaining an audience. Projecting your voice is important. While you may be streaming your voice directly into your viewer's ears, if they're listening or watching on headphones, you're not actually sitting next to them. You have to speak up, speak clearly, and project your voice into the microphone. Often new streamers will buy entire new microphones, not understanding why it doesn't pick them mumbling and whispering at a distance any better, not talking about ASMR, and it just doesn't work that way. That being said, you don't need to yell. You'll see many streamers overcompensating and just talking at a shouting or yelling volume that's not healthy or sustainable, plus you're causing a lot more reflections off of your walls and your desk. Some of this you just pick up through experience and time, but taking opportunities to gain more real-world experience, such as public speaking classes, really help. I mumble a lot in my day-to-day -day speech, but my college public speaking class really helped me make sure that I'm heard by an audience, and that directly translated to on-microphone speaking skills. This isn't just a matter of your peak loudness either. Consistency matters a lot. Starting your sentences super loud, but trailing off as you finish your sentence is not an enjoyable listening experience and much harder to balance for. <laughs> shouting during an exciting moment in a stream is okay, but having half of your sound shouting and half of it really quiet is not fun. 
You also have to balance the projecting you're doing with your mic gain and levels, either on physical controls or in software. You may find that over time you actually have to reduce your mic gain because you're projecting better than you're used to. The Elgato Wave mics make it easy to quickly tweak gain, and the clip guard feature makes sure that you never clip or distort during loud moments, even if you do get a little excited. Technique is still king, but these bonuses certainly do help. Beyond loudness, there's also lots of little tricks you can practice to improve your mic technique. Learning to soften your plosives make makes for a more natural speaking pattern. Drinking plenty of water and making sure to reduce your mouth smacks and clicks lowers the abrasiveness of your audio as well. Also, don't drink soda before you go to record a stream that makes your saliva super thick and it's hard to speak. I struggle with this a lot. There's also the classic taze on day tip of moving your mouth away from your mic to breathe. Not everyone can help it, but a heavy breather can be very off-putting during a live stream. Learning to breathe more quietly or away from the mic does a lot to help viewer retention. All of these skills just take practice and conscious reminders whenever you watch your streams back to keep working on them. Vocal coaches can help too. They'd also tell you that doing vocal warm-ups to get your vocal cords ready to go go a long way towards protecting your voice from going out after long streams. If you find yourself regularly losing your voice or feeling strained after streams, you should be putting a lot of work in to help keep your voice healthy before you burn out. Another important note for consistency is just keeping the same distance from your microphone. If you're constantly moving closer and further away from your mic, your audio levels are going to be all over the place. We Two final tips about technique have to do with vocal fry and vocal pulling. A vocal fry is when you're speaking without enough breath being pushed through your vocal cords. Whether you're speaking or singing, most of the sounds that we make are actually produced by air moving across our vocal cords, not by working them like a muscle. A common vocal fry I hear from online newbie presenters is when they relax their breath before their sentence is done, resulting in the final word or few words sounding almost whiny or as if every sentence is a question. This sounds really annoying. And while you may be used to it, someone hearing you for the first time may bounce really quickly or because it's off-putting. Again, conscious efforts to stop this will make what seems like an inherent trait to your voice Go away pretty quickly. Practice makes perfect. Vocal pulling is quite similar. This is pushing, pulling, or tightening your vocal cords to force a sound that isn't your natural speaking tone. For example, when I do my radio announcer voice like this, it's cool and there's a time and place for it, but that place isn't conversation or conversational long-running streams. Unless you're a shoutcaster, I guess. This wears your throat out quickly and is just unnatural sounding. Many of my earlier videos had me fully locked into the radio announcer mode, and while it's, you know, some found it cool, many definitely found it annoying. I, I promise, your normal conversational voice is just fine. Really. Getting everything right before your audio hits your computer will always beat out doing anything after the fact, but sometimes you still have to tweak something or you want a little more. Let's talk about that. First, let's talk about background noise removal. What if you can't quite reduce it enough in your space, or clicks and keyboard taps keep making it in more than you'd like? If you're streaming with OBS Studio, as of recent updates, it ships with two noise filters that can help you. RN Noise runs on the CPU and will be tough to run alongside CPU demanding games or applications, but does a great job at removing background noises from your audio. If you have an NVIDIA RTX graphics card, which I know it's tough these days. You can use RTX Voice either as part of the NVIDIA Broadcast app or via the OBS filter if you install the VoiceFX SDK. This allows you to use special cores on your graphics card to automatically filter out any frequencies that aren't your voice based on AI training. I demoed this back when it was first released and it's basically magic. Here's a vacuum. The vacuum is running. The vacuum is running, the vacuum is running, the vacuum is running, the vacuum is running. The vacuum is running, the vacuum is running. Additional resources on setting this up are linked below. What if you just want to make your voice sound better? or keep it from clipping. Wavelink, the software backing the Elgato Wave microphones and Wave XLR interface, allows you to activate an awesome feature called ClipGuard. This is effectively full protection from ever peaking or clipping your microphone and distorting in your viewer's ears. ClipGuard works by running a secondary safety track at 20 dB lower than your main audio feed and automatically switching to it if you get too loud, such as when you cheer after winning a game or something. Got it! Nah, oh, yeah! 
Hell yeah, dude. It's our team, dude. Hell yeah. Whoa. Blue team go, dude. Woo! That way, your viewers can still hear your enthusiasm and energy, but not you're not breaking headphones or <laughs> sounding all distorted -y and gross. If you want to enhance your voice or get rid of some gnarly frequencies going on, that's where VSTs come in. VSTs are audio plugins that can run in real time and modify your audio. OBS comes with some basic tools built in, but I usually recommend mixing them with the Replugs VST set, a completely free set of VSTs released by the makers of the Reaper audio editing software. If you see info about a free trial, that applies to Reaper itself, not the Replugs, so you may have downloaded the wrong thing. Add your microphone device to OBS, right-click it in your mixer, and select Filters. Add a new filter. Here, you can add EQ to tweak frequencies, a compressor to balance out your levels a bit, and so on. My big warning here is to keep it simple. It's easy to fall into the trap of overdoing your post-processing, something I did for years, and making really wacky sounding audio. In reality, you just want to tweak what you have and make it sound a little bit better. In our example here, the Elgato Wave is a wonderful and natural sounding microphone out of the box, so we only want to tweak it a little bit. My generally recommended audio chain is noise gate first, be it with RN noise, RTX voice, or a more traditional gate, then EQ, then compressor, and then de -esser if you need. Some people prefer to have their noise removal in the end, but I find it easier to get smoother results if you're not amplifying background noise with the other post-processing effects earlier in the chain. So here's what my processing chain typically looks like. EQ, using the Replugs VST I mentioned before, OBS's built-in compressor, and a de-esser, again, using Replugs. EQing is more of an art than a science. I, I could make a whole video on this, or a whole series on this even. Comment below if you'd like that. But there's some general rules to follow. Usually, you want to start cutting everything below 60 hertz ish to avoid too much bass. You might think you want this left in, but many listeners will complain about boominess, and you might start to activate the subwoofers of listeners' setups, which is not a good thing. Higher voices may not need this, but mid and lower voices do. 100 to 150 hertz is where some of the warmer frequencies live. A small boost to this can help give your sound that warm radio sound on some mics. On others, you may actually need to go ahead and cut this to avoid some muddiness. Muddiness in the voice is a huge problem around 200 to 250 hertz. Too much of these frequencies and your voice can be almost impossible to decipher. I usually cut a little bit here depending on the mic. The 800 to 1000 hertz range is considered the mids. A lot more of your nasally frequencies live here. A cut at 1000 hertz can significantly improve the sound of your audio, depending on the mic and speaker. Frequencies around 3000 hertz can add some clarity to your audio with a small boost. Too much and you start to get too crisp and too sharp from, for some listeners ears. Remember, less is more. And a huge rule of EQing work is to cut before you add. We're not here to boost you to sounding like a robot, unless you want that. We just want to cut out some of the less flattering frequencies just a bit. Sometimes a little mid cut, a little high boost, and a low cut is all you need. Play with it and test a lot with plenty of breaks to avoid ear fatigue. Compressors are a little easier. What is a compressor? The name is pretty self-explanatory, but it takes your audio and squishes it down or compresses it. The loudest parts become less loud to give you a more consistent sounding feed. This comes at the cost of dynamic range, but helps a lot with broadcast audio where you don't want to be getting super quiet and super loud unexpectedly. For the ratio, 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 is generally the ideal ratio for voiceover as a general rule. The threshold should generally be at a point where you're getting around 5 decibels of gain reduction. For me, minus 16 dB works, but you, you may need to play with it for you. Then you add 4 to 5 decibels of gain back either in the compressor settings or with a secondary gain filter. The Elgato Wave microphone sounds great and pretty natural out of the box, so you might want to keep some noise removal for keyboard sounds, but you may not even want or need a compressor, as ClipGuard already keeps you from clipping. It just helps with uniformity if you vary your speaking volume much or move around a whole lot during your streams. Clean up and prepare your environment before you start recording or streaming. Master your technique while using the microphone and provide some finishing touches after you've already sent the signal to your computer. And you have high quality top tier audio to please viewers ears and help take your career to the next level. Obviously different microphones sound different and need different tools, but these principles apply to just about any vocal audio setup. And if you're looking for a microphone upgrade, you can't go wrong with Elgato's Wave 1 or Wave 3 microphones. They have high quality capsules designed with Lewitt, come with amazing virtual mixing software called Wave Link, and are plug and play with a single USB-C cable. Elgato also has a variety of other tools to build your stream setup, such as their great new microphone arms. Links to those will be in the description. Thanks to Elgato for sponsoring this guide. If you need any additional help setting up your audio, come chat with us on Discord at discord.gg slash epostvox. 
get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Remember, be kind, rewind.